At the top of the course, I described Smartsheet to you based on the fact that it was a perfect combination of a spreadsheet and a project management application. You've seen a lot in terms of the layout and how it clearly looks just like a spreadsheet. You've also gotten a few hints at some of the spreadsheet-like functionality that Smartsheet has. You've seen me write a couple of formulas in the course. I thought it would be appropriate, especially on the heels of everything else you've seen so far, to do a lesson showing you specifically and in sufficient detail just how far you can go in terms of writing formulas in Smartsheet. Let's see what this looks like. So a project budget is going to be easy to do. We're going to come back to this timesheet in just a minute. But a project budget is very easy to do, and I had uh, referenced this earlier in the course. You can create drop downs very easily, so I did actually go ahead on this one and take my item list from my QuickBooks file and drop them all in here into the uh, drop down choices. So I could pick my activity code. So for, pur for purposes of budgeting, you know, that's useful to do. And then I pick from my customer and job list. So I've got Miracle Man Entertainment as a client who's a close friend. I know he won't mind putting his company name in my video. And then I have, notice, a budget amount of 1000 and an actual amount of 1200 and Notice I use conditional formatting, which we also covered earlier in the course, so that it basically says when the amount of the variance is less than zero, then light it up in red and yellow. And the formula for this to how to get it to calculate is very easy. If you've ever written a formula in Excel, then you know how to do it. Equals the budget minus the actual. Enter. Boom. And now if the actual was less than budget, of course, the conditional formatting goes away. Now I could even add another condition here and say if I'm under budget, that's good, right? So I could go here and say, let's add another condition. And then, so we're talking about variance. And is greater than zero. And then we'll apply a good format. So we'll make it green. Let's make it a dark green. And the font is white. And OK. Boom. So if it's exact, if we're right on budget, no big deal. Over, it's going to get us a a good value under it's going to get us a bad but one thing I did when I did the under was and we can fix that just go back here and we don't want to apply it to the entire row we just want to apply it to variance and okay and that fixes that problem and it's so cool to me how it updates just right away in the background even while I'm still editing the uh, conditional formatting. So this is a very easy way to set up a budget and then all you'd have to do is add in all your line items what items need to be performed in order to complete this project. We've already looked at detailed task lists for accounting engagements and for tax engagements so you could add this easily into the scheme of a project like that where you just add the budget columns right and you'd add in the activity code so you just expand on that same project so for each thing you could identify how much did we uh, ex how much do we expect it to cost us and how much does it actually cost us? And then you can do the revenue side too. How much did we uh, say we were going to charge for this? And then you can make sure that you're not going over or under budget very easily. Of course, then the question is how are you going to tally up the actual? And that's probably a subject for a whole other course. So that's how you can set up a simple project budget. Now let's go over the timesheet. When I originally looked at the timesheet with you earlier in the course, I mentioned that we could set something up where we can look up the rates. So let's show you how to do that. First I set up the rate table and I purposely lined up the activity codes here so that I could choose the activity codes this way and establish what the rate is for each. Now the formula is pretty easy to write. I basically say equals if open parentheses the activity code here equals and I'll click on bank rec as the first one comma then make the rate 40 comma otherwise if open parentheses this guy equals financial statement review, comma, then give me the 165 there, comma. Otherwise, if open parentheses, the activity code here equals compilation, comma, give me the 150, comma. Otherwise, if activity code equals payroll, comma, then give me the 35, comma. Otherwise, now that I've gone through all the other, all the possible conditions, then if it doesn't find a match for some reason, then I say make it zero. Hit enter, 
and boom, it looks up my rate because I had compilation up here. And of course, now if I change this drop down to bank rec, it changes the rate to 40 and updates my calculation. That's really cool, right? This saves, this is a time saver. This is a, a little detailed thing that we can do to save time so that, as I've been saying throughout the whole course, when it comes to completing the project or getting to wherever it is we're trying to go with this, we can do it with time and room to spare. So that's using a timesheet a little bit more, with a little bit more intelligence, right? Where I can set this kind of thing up. I can drop all my item codes from, say, my QuickBooks file in here, and this way they can be looked up this way. Great way to do the timesheet. I'll save that. Let's go to the Smartsheet formula examples. What you're going to see here in this lesson is that a lot of the functions that are available to you in spreadsheets like Microsoft Excel and Google Sheet is also available in Smartsheet. All of your basics are definitely there. You can do your arithmetic, addition, multiplication, division, subtraction, and you can even get into things like date-based functions so that you can you know, do formulas based on a date and let's say you want to add seven days to the date. Those sorts of things are all available to you in Smartsheet. By the end of this lesson, you'll be able to see all the stuff that you can do and also how to reference a specific area within Smartsheet where they give you a template that shows you all the formulas that are available to you to be used in Smartsheet. So this, my friends, is where everything else is in terms of formulas in Smartsheet. And you'll see that there's a lot of the same functions that are available in Excel or Google Sheets. It's a lot of the same stuff. It doesn't have everything, but it's got a lot. And what you can do, which is what I did when I first got into Smartsheet, is go through this. This is a template that's available. So when you set up a Smartsheet uh, account and you go to create a new project, you can browse templates and in the search just type formulas and hit enter and you, there it is, Smartsheet Formula Examples. Now what I did was I said use template and I kind of dropped the template into the, uh, the workspace here for Value Inc. So I've got it here. But you can go through this and you should go through this and spend some time learning all, you have of course your basic arithmetic, addition, subtraction, division, multiplication works the same way. You just do one value plus the other minus the other forward slash for divide, asterisk for multiplication. No big deal. Uh, sum, average, max. All, a lot of your basic formulas are in here. We can do the uh, absolute value, right, which will essentially take a negative and turn it into a positive. Uh, we've got count formulas. We can check the length of a value, how many characters are in that cell. Uh, we have logical formulas. We just went through the if formula. And there's other stuff. And then you can use these to nest. You can write detailed nested conditional statements, just like you can in Excel. It's really powerful stuff. Here's our text formulas. We have concatenate, which a lot of us use in Excel to combine two text values. Uh, find, replace, all, all this stuff is here. And what I encourage you to do is go through this. It's got all my date formulas, which is it's, if you've ever watched me do a, a cash flow projection course, you can watch that course if you're a subscribed student. I have the, uh, the last part of the Mastering Excel for Accounting Pros course does cash flow projections where I go over my famous formula where I use the date to make it easy to copy across the timeline and update so you can extend it out two years, three years, five years, whatever you want to do. So all this stuff is here. There's, there's a lot of power in what you can do with Smartsheet. And because you have this formula functionality combined with a project management application, it makes it so powerful in terms of what you can do and what you can track and how you can also use that kind of information. You can write conditional formulas that test the value and based on that value set up conditional formatting so that it lights things up in different colors. You can really bring these this project management application to life by setting it up in a way that makes it very visual so that people can very quickly and easily at a glance look at, at your project and know exactly where something's at and know exactly where something needs attention so that people don't have to think too much about it. They see something lighting up in red, oh it needs attention, let's go deal with that. They see something in green, okay it's good, it looks like that's done, what's next? Right, and all of this is designed to help you create the uh, environment that you can work in that enables you to, say it with me now, get the project completed with what? Room and time to spare. And that way you get to do it stress-free and you get time to make sure everything's done really well and everything's done right. My friends, I really hope that you've gotten something out of this course. As always, and as I've said at the end of every single lesson, please post your comments and questions in the answers form if you're an enrolled student at schoolofbookkeeping.com. If you're not an enrolled student, become one. We've got lots of great resources in there for you. 
And if you're not an enrolled student and you're not ready to become one, then take advantage of our Facebook group, Accountants, Bookkeepers, and Business Owners. Request to join. We'll let you in. Just don't spam us. And you can ask your questions there. And I and many of the other members there use Smartsheet already. Uh, Sarah Laidlaw is definitely another power user of Smartsheet. So she'll probably be only too happy to come in there and answer your questions if I don't get to it before her. So as always, I hope you've gotten something out of this. I hope you learned something and had some fun. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day. And I look forward to seeing you in the next course. Now that I've shown you how to write formulas in Smartsheet and just how far you can go with it, I'm hoping that I've provoked you to think in terms of ideas that you have, not just in terms of writing formulas, but in terms of everything I've shown you in this course. I'd love to get your feedback and hear from you if you've come up with any ideas outside of what I've shown you in terms of how you're going to use Smartsheet. I was really excited to bring you this course because as you can tell from the examples I've given, I really do use this product in my own practice and in my own life. And I love the fact that I'm able to show you, as I've done, exactly how I use it in my business. Hopefully you can take away something from this that's really going to add tremendous value to your practice and to the businesses of your clients. I look forward to hearing from you and getting your feedback and questions. Please feel free to use the answers forum if you're a subscribed student at schoolofbookkeeping.com. Otherwise, feel free to take advantage of our public forums and ask us any questions as well as provide us with any feedback about this course. Thank you so much for watching. Thank <laughs> you.